Okay, we're live at 11.05 plus a couple. Um, trying to get organized. It's still here. We just, I don't know what's the deal. We checked a couple different places for the valve covers and everybody that even says they have them, it's like, well, when you get down to getting them, they're just back ordered. So they must be on a slow boat from China. We can't, uh, does he want something different or? No, they're cool thinned ones. They're cool thinned ones, huh? Yeah. Anyway, so we've we've kind of put it on hold, but I've been waiting on you to get back. You. You, the viewer. I got the windshield installed, if you remember, or maybe you've seen it, maybe you didn't. We were uh, talking about installing the glass and putting the posts on. I've got them sitting on. I've got them fitting. They're pretty tight here, not 100%. We've got a rubber gasket down on the bottom here. Now, there's two ways to do this. There's a felt that could be put in there and this put tight to that. But on this particular application, if it's a full windshield frame, I would probably do that. This one I feel much safer if I just urethane it in. Now, when you urethane a windshield, um, this stuff is messy. I mean, it is like messy. Matter of fact, let's do the steering column first. We're going to come back to this because you just, can look at it. Just look it at it. it. I will have this all over me. I do have rubber gloves and it just doesn't come off with thinner or anything. So uh, we use the 3M urethane. It's fast set. Um, but let's do the column real quick and then we'll, we'll do this. So I've got this all set up. Oh. And I had a wrench. Alright, well, here's, you just have to pay attention. This comes off here with a, a couple of Allen screws through here. You can see the column drop. And uh, I just set it on here and I was going to take it off to show you, but you cannot do that. And you can see the little bit of a gap there. Can you see all that in the picture, Josh? Yes. Good. So you can see how it's going to push up real tight to that once I tighten those. I took this piece of angle iron cut it. I got a hole drilled in the center. I got a couple hole drills underneath. You can see those. I've mounted my steering column drop. And then what we do is if you're high beam, low beam, it just fits real nice up under there and it's up out of the way. Um, you can see some of here we go. When this comes around this will plug into the column and this will plug into this piece right here. So once I swing it up, it's going to come up under here. Now this hole that I've got centered up under here, if you if you got an angle drill or something, we have an angle drill that works well. I don't know if you can get a full size drill in there. But I'll come for the back side. Once this is all straight, I'll drill coming out the front. And I'll put a, a button head bolt on here, something real. Quarter inch stainless steel. Quarter inch stainless about one inch, polish it, make it nice. They're like uh, something like this, right here. So you will have that button heads, you know, in the middle there, but I think it, it looks fine. It's not a big deal. This can be glued and glassed in if you want, this uh, bracket here. And then you wouldn't have this, uh, this bolt. It wouldn't be so removable, but uh, that's acceptable too. We've done it both ways. This is easy, and I don't. I am not annoyed by having one little button head bolt up there. So there's that. Once it comes around, like I said, it's going to fit nice. And if you can see how my button for the high beam low beam indicator is going to be right there. I'm going to have to maybe notch this just a touch. It's going to be barely rubbing on it. But once I get that mounted there, real easy to reach my hand under. And then all your wiring is up over the top, nothing hanging on the floor, real nice, real clean. On the Spirit car you can see we've come through the floor, and now the floor here has already got a toll plate on it. This is part of the insert, the fiberglass insert, and you can kind of see, if you look through here probably Josh, you can see this is the insert, and this is actually the floor of the body. Uh, so there's it's a two-piece, and then there's a Nitacore. Um, really structured up on this it makes it uh, real strong 
so this comes through, there's a bit of a V between here and the firewall, if you look on the outside here. <coughs> Can you see where that comes down? What we do is we put a piece of 2 inch ID PVC tubing straight through. This hole will be a little bit bigger, the hole on the floor will be a little bit bigger. I'll leave that PVC hang out on both sides about this far. Get my column put in. We do it here on a jig, but our jig is nothing but a shortened frame that's got wheels on it that we can move around that's got that uh, steering box on it. So if you've got the body from us uh, with the insert, uh, you can just use your frame as the jig. Put the body on where it goes. Uh, holes will already be in the floor for dropping the bolts through into your uh, body mounts that will be on the frame. There will just be a couple tabs, four tabs under there. Put them in. There you go. Slide your column down. Get it onto the joint. You can see this is a D-shaft on the 27. You'll have to have a little D-shaft on the top going in here. The 23 goes right on and then there's one joint and it's a Vega box so it's spline. What is that? 28 spline I think? Or 26 spline on a Vega box? 36 spline. 26 spline. 36. 36, okay. With a, with a D-shaft. So, it's not that big a deal. I mean, we've done it a bunch of ways, and we've come down to, I like that way. It's pretty simple. It doesn't take that long to take your angle, cut it, mount your column. And the main thing with, with, the, uh, with it being triangulated like that, going through the floor, it's solid. This thing is not really going to move up and down. I mean, it's hard to tell how much force, but I've probably got, oh, 10, 15 pounds of force going down on it when I'm pushing there, and you can see it barely moved. So you're not more concerned about the upward and down, it's just you don't want that steering column to twist. So make sure that uh, this is tight when you pull the uh, column drop together there. So that's that. Now, you ready to get your thing? It's a good clean way to do it. What I'll do. We should make. We should have a bet going. And see how much urethane you get on you. No, oh, no, there'd be none. That's gonna be perfect. Now this glass happens to be back a little bit, so I'm gonna put just a bit of a, a something back here to hold that glass forward. I want it to be equal in there, so there's urethane on both sides. I'm just gonna urethane the front of it now. Um, A lot of times tape will make a nice spacer, you just roll it up, get about the width I want there, I can stick it in there. I mean, uh, it's soft, it doesn't, I just made that upper spacer, but whatever's handy, grab it, put it in. I got about an equal space on both sides. Now I'm going to want to, on this one, because of the way it is, I'm going to want to tape on the glass too, and then I'll pull it off right away. A lot of times if I'm doing a, a car like on a, a Model A or something where I'm putting a side glass or back glass in, I'll just wipe it, have the uh, tape only on the painted side of the body, and I'll let my urethane stay on the window until it dries hard, and then I can take a razor blade, cut a straight line, and then it'll scrape right off of that window with the razor blade. But I'm not going to do that here. So what kind of odds are you putting on this? Urethane on my hands or on my oh, clothes. Oh, I can't see the comments, or I'd oh. <laughs> we'd know. I'd give it about a 60-40. I won't get it on me, but it's uh. You can see I've got pretty even line going through there. Yeah, I cut the top. That's, I don't have any on me yet. So I'm, I'm looking good. Just a smash finger. That's okay. And you can use cork. I know there was a company, yeah. Jack, where we got cork. the... Cork is good. cork all the time. But on the 27 now, with this open, I, I would just highly recommend that you urethane this one in. Yep. The 23s have got the full channel around it. A little different. But this is, this is just a rubber gasket keeping a little bit off of the, the body here, but it's making a good seal. So structurally, this is not holding it on the bottom. The only two things that are holding it on is both sides here. So you don't want to uh, 
risk your windshield blowing out. Right on your lap. Yeah, that would be. Would be. Oh no. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. High pressure, cause I gotta cut this. All right, your thing on my tools don't count. You need to look over here. Sometimes if you put tape around it, it'll last longer, but once your thing starts kicking, it kicks. It doesn't, doesn't last all that long once it's open, so use what you're going to use. And uh, you're lucky if it's still any good by the time you use it again. Silence is golden. So far, none on you. None on me. I haven't uh, taken my gloves off yet, but you can see that's a pretty clean line in there. Urethane is tough. It is tough to get out of there. It's going to keep the window, since I balanced it on both sides, it's not going to hit on both sides. Um, for the sake of, I wouldn't call this television, what do we call this? Instant streaming. I did jab my nice Phillips screwdriver into there, so I gotta clean that up, but I think if I can pull this off, turn it inside out. Oh, got it on you. <laughs> no, never mind, that didn't happen, holy cow. Okay, well this is pretty minor, it could be worse than that. And it will not come off, so don't worry, it'll be there until it wears off, but there you go. There's your windshield. Not a hard process, just make sure your masking lines are clean, otherwise it's going to be a, a wobbly line, and I mean, it'd be like a pinstripe, a wobbly pinstripe that looks like a wobbly pinstripe. If you've got a wobbly urethane line, you're going to see that, and it's going to be, you know, it would attract my attention, maybe not attract everybody's attention, but the cleaner, the more on you can get, the better. So, uh, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, but we'll do something. Got other projects going on. I may, uh, man, there's something else I can do on this. Probably Eddie's, maybe we just, uh, you know what, I got something to buff. Maybe we'll do some buffing tomorrow. We did that before, but we may do some buffing tomorrow. Or we may do some uh, something. We're glad you were with us today. Hopefully those were two helpful hints. Those are a couple of areas that um, a lot of people don't do a lot of. And uh, it could be a bigger problem than what, what you just seen. Just go for it. And we got coffee break contemplations today. And a friend of mine, Ernie, the hot rod man, wrote these books. Hmm, if love is the answer, all we have to do is ask meaningful questions. Yeah, Josh had the same look I did. Hmm. We'll think about that one. <laughs> we'll, we'll finish with this one, though. A smile multiplies the value of a face. So, the smile multiplies the value of a face. And if love is the answer, all we have to do is ask meaningful questions. Okay. Thanks for being with us. We will see you tomorrow. <laughs>